Watching a football game is exciting enough. However, what's more exciting is watching a match where things end up weird. During a match between Austria and Denmark, a mysterious hole popped up from nowhere and stopped the game. The players were furious but also confused by this weird deep hole. It was a Danish player who brought this to everyone's attention when his leg got stuck. The hole was deep enough to consume his ankle. Luckily, he found it before the game started. Such a situation led to a career-ending accident. He was just showing everyone how deep the hole was. On top of that, the match was delayed by 90 minutes due to a power outage. The fans were confused. Some were frustrated that the team they wanted to support couldn't play, while others found it amusing. During a game between Colombia and Brazil at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, a giant green locust decided to land on James Rodriguez's arm right after he scored a penalty. The player didn't notice at first. I guess that green guy was a huge football fan or the locust just wanted to congratulate him in its own way. It's certainly not the first animal to appear in the middle of a football game. Another Brazil-related incident happened when two local clubs were going head-to-head -head. while the game was in a heat. A dog decided it wanted a piece of the action. It got in the game and furiously went for the ball and turned it into its chew toy. The players were left stunned and agitated with the dog disrupting the flow of the game. Eventually, the officials intervened and spoiled all the fun for our little doggo. In 2006, during a Champions League match between Villarreal and Arsenal, a little grey squirrel zipped across the pitch near the striker. It was also probably just a huge fan. Ever heard a group of foxes invading a pitch? In Dens Park, a bunch of foxes decided to dig around the pitch, probably on the lookout for rabbits. Diego Maradona is one of the best football players in history. The Argentinian was quick, energetic, and wowed audiences all over the world with his passion. However, in a quarterfinal match between Argentina and England during the 1986 World Cup, things went too far when he extended his fist in the air and punched the ball only for it to go behind the opposition's net. Much to the fans' fury, the goal stood. The refs didn't have a clear vision of the goal, even though they should have kept their eyes on the ball. The Argentinians were up one goal and the match eventually ended 2-1 in favor of the Argentinians. They eventually lifted the cup, which solidified Maradona's presence as the greatest of all time. One of the most unforgettable nights was Brazil versus Germany during the 2014 World Cup. Both are giants in the game, both with star-studded players ready to make their country proud. Both teams were crying out for different reasons. Brazil conceded a whopping seven goals on their own turf. The Brazilian fans were furious during this historic moment. Germany ended up lifting the World Cup with Argentina as the runner-ups. The Champions League final in 2018 between Real Madrid and Liverpool was one of the most anticipated games of the year where Liverpool was eyeing victory. Their goalie, Loris Karius, was in tip-top shape, but that night was not his night. The team and fans across the world were shocked when he made not one, but two costly mistakes. The first one was when he accidentally passed the goal to Real Madrid striker, Karim Benzema, near the goal. Corius recovered the goal and didn't see the striker nearby. He miscalculated his pass and awarded the goal to Madrid. The second mistake was when Gareth Bale let loose a curling shot where Karius could have easily caught the ball. But instead of that, he tried to deflect it and the ball slipped past his hand and into the back of the net. Madrid ended up lifting the Champions League trophy and Karius's career was just not the same anymore. But it's cool because Liverpool ended up winning the trophy years later against Tottenham. Another strange fiasco happened during the 2014 World Cup qualifier, but not everyone saw this game. It was the United States versus Costa Rica, and they were playing under some of the worst conditions. It was snowing non-stop, and the players were furious. The Costa Rican team even sent out an appeal, suggesting that the game should have never been played, but was ultimately rejected. Team US ended up winning the match 1-0. Another bizarre scene occurred when a goalkeeper decided to check his phone during the game. The player played for Atletico Paranaense of the Brazilian League. No one knew what he was doing, but it was just impressive that he was wearing his goalkeeper gloves while handling his phone.
There was a lot of drama in the match between France and Kuwait on June 21, 1982, as the latter were losing 3-1. And just like that, Kuwait conceded another goal. Nothing special except that Kuwait's leader at the time decided to march down the stands and confront the referee himself in the middle of the ongoing match. He just couldn't accept the goal and urged the team to leave the pitch. The ref was pressured to disallow the goal and the game continued. They still ended up conceding a goal late in the game. Unlike professional football balls, the balls used at college games have white stripes painted at one of the ends to make it easier to spot the ball during nighttime games. Wilson, a famous sports equipment company, has been the exclusive provider of footballs for NFL games since 1941. They now produce 4,000 footballs every day. The first American football game in history was played between Rutgers and Princeton Colleges. It was popular among students, but soon became quite a rough sport. At some point, it was even banned to play football in public spaces. Walter Camp, a famous rugby player, became Yale's football team captain in Save the Day. He changed the rules of the game and made it a lot as we know it today. The 20-yard line to the end zone is known as the red zone. Red was chosen for the name as it's a warning color for the defense. Once the offense reaches this zone, they are in the best scoring position. Gridiron football is another name for the game. No fun stories here. The only reason is that the playing field does look like a gridiron used in cooking. It seems almost impossible that brothers would be coaching NFL teams that play at the Super Bowl. But it happened in 2013. Jim Harbo and John Harbo coached the San Francisco 49ers in Baltimore Ravens and stood against each other at the big game. Their parents were watching in the Superdome. John, the elder brother, won. They briefly exchanged congratulations after the game, but didn't speak for weeks after it. Both admitted that the game was emotionally super hard for them. There used to be the National Football League and the American Football League, each with its own champion, until they merged in 1970. They had to decide about the new structure and couldn't come to an agreement. And guess how they finally solved it? Well, they just dropped five options into a vase and took one out at random. Kansas City Chief Lamar Hunt coined the name Super Bowl as he was inspired by a toy for just 98 cents. His wife found it at a toy store in Dallas, Texas and told him the little ball could bounce over a small house. Not everyone liked this idea and there were even contests for a different name, but nothing has beaten the toy-inspired one. The first Super Bowl took place on January 15, 1967. The tickets were just $12 compared to the $100,000 that you'd have to pay for the VIP suite today. Yet, there were still many empty seats at Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, where it took place. They chose the location only six weeks before kickoff. Now it's known three years before the actual game. Ever since the fifth Super Bowl, they have used Roman numbers for identifying the games. It helps avoid some confusion. For example, Super Bowl 2023 would take place at the beginning of that year, but the majority of the season would have been played in 2022. The only exception was Super Bowl 50. The NFL believed naming it Super Bowl L might have lowered ticket sales. The NFL never pays any of those superstar singers that perform at halftime shows. Appearing there at the prime time brings the artists much more money in the long run as their record sales always spike after the game. They do get money to cover the expenses they have to prepare for the show, though. It can be more than $10 million, so that's not a bad deal after all. Each Super Bowl team gets 108 balls, 54 of them serve as practice balls, and another 54 are used during the actual game. The usual halftime of the NFL game is 12 to 15 minutes, but the super halftime is 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the performance that's going on. The coin they flipped at the 44 game to decide which team would start the kickoff had spent 11 days on a NASA spaceship orbiting the Earth. To make sure the game is always fair, there must be seven officials with different functions present on the field. You can recognize them by their black and white striped shirts. The referee is the highest rank among them and has the most responsibilities. Then comes the umpire, the back judge, the head linesman, the side judge, the line judge, and the field judge. Miami has hosted the Super Bowl the most, with 11 games. The runner-up is New Orleans with 10. It normally takes place in a warmer climate or at an indoor stadium. The only exception was the game that took place at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans, 
when the temperature at game time was 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The Arizona Cardinals are older than the state they represent. The team was founded in 1898, and Arizona officially became a state only 14 years later. The team also had the longest period in NFL history when they didn't win a single game postseason. 51 years. A player can get a yellow card or a red card for committing a foul and anything that the referee considers wrong. But did you know managers and coaching staff can also be handed the infamous cards? Yep, some managers are known for their raunchy antics on the pitch and sometimes go a little overboard. Referees are allowed to book them yellow cards or even red cards if they cross the line. They will usually miss the next game and be confined to the stands above where the assistant manager will take over. It's even possible to get a red card before a game even starts. If a player decides to act up before the kickoff, the referee can hand them a red card and the team will be forced to start the game with only 10 players fielded on the pitch. A manager has to announce the starting 11 players when the game begins, and if someone is given a red card, then the manager cannot replace the player. They will have to start with one player short. So, you better behave. Given that this rule is permitted, no match proceeds if seven players are starting the game. Otherwise, the match will be forfeited. This can be because some players were naughty and got the red card, or if there are some injuries or any other reasons. There can be four red cards given during a game. Otherwise, the match will have to be stopped if more red cards are shown. So what happens if your goalkeeper gets injured? Well, throw in the backup keeper as a substitute. And what will happen if the sub gets a red card or is injured? There's no other goalkeeper backup in the squad, so any outfield player will have to take the goalie's place. They will have to wear gloves and turn on their saving and diving instincts to keep their team above water. Goalkeepers are only allowed to hold the ball for six seconds after saving the ball or recovering it. Any longer than that can result in a booking from the referee since they might consider it to be time-wasting. The goalkeeper is the only player allowed to hold the ball with their hands, but only in the penalty box. If they catch the ball outside, they can be booked or sent out depending on the play. A goalkeeper can't pick up the ball with their hands if a player from their team back passes the ball back to them on foot. If so, then it'll be considered a foul. The goalie must receive the pass and play by foot like the rest of them and pass it or clear it away. However, if the goalie receives a back pass by a header or chest, then they can catch the ball with their hands. This also doesn't mean that you can set up your back pass by kicking the ball in the air and heading it for your keeper to pick up. You can get booked for it. If the goalie releases the ball after catching it or holding it in their hands, then they can't pick it up again. If the goalie is caught doing it, then the referee will award the opposing team a free kick outside the penalty area. Years ago, the penalty box was so much smaller than how we know it now. So back then, the free kicks were so close to the net and the human wall blocking it was basically blocking the whole thing it's almost impossible for the ball to get through. A crazy rule in football is if there are no corner flags, then the game cannot proceed. One of the only times this happened was in the 1974 World Cup in a match between Germany and Holland. The officials forgot to put the flags out, so the referee had to delay the game. But the staff added the flags. The game was okay to start. It was only recently that teams can substitute five players during a game. For a very long time, teams were only able to switch three players during a match. Changing five players means excellent squad rotation for any upcoming matches, especially if the team is competing in multiple competitions at the same time. But there was a point in time where no team was allowed to substitute their players even if one of them was injured. Before 1965, if your team had 11 players on the pitch, then don't expect the bench to help you out. I don't think there was a bench to begin with. Getting substituted is annoying, especially if you're on a roll. But if you refuse to be subbed, then actually nothing happens. You would think that the ref will book you or give you some kind of warning, but nope, the game will resume and the player will be left on the field. While FIFA may not penalize you, your club can fine you and you can lose some of the respect from your team members, the coaching staff and fans. No rule suggests you must put your first or last name on the back of your jersey. You can put whatever you want, as long as it's not offensive. 
footballers tend to put their nicknames they've had since they were young. There's no way you can score a goal directly from a throw-in. That's when the ball is out of bounds, so the players have to restart by throwing the ball back in play with their hands. So, if you're trying to be clever and throw the ball directly into the opposition's net without any of your players touching it, then it will just be a goal kick for their keeper. If you're up for a penalty kick and you're face-to-face -face with the keep, then you can pass the ball if you want to. This only works if a foul takes place in the game and not during the shootout at the end of some games. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.